do that. We'll do that. And we'll give them a nice Christmas blanket. <laughs> How has God at work in our city? We are on a journey to discover and document this unfolding story. This is Daydox Austin. This week, the Street Youth Clubhouse. Food donations. Okay, I'm signing for 17 pounds, huh? Today we're hanging out with Terry. We met up with him as he was picking up donated goods for a local ministry that he runs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Terry is a former tech engineer. He now spends his days hanging out with the city's street youth. In Austin, there are around 200 youth under the age of 25 who are experiencing homelessness. These are homeless young adults. Half of them are living on the streets and half of them are living in some, some sort of probably not sustainable housing situation. Most of them aged out of the foster system and then ended up on the streets. They've created their own subculture and Terry runs what is basically a clubhouse for them just off the UT drag. Come on, Miss Rosie. You're doing good. Whoa, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Ian, I brought lunch. All right. Hello. That's broccoli. I would call it low priority. You may. All right, that is chicken, which some of my clients would say is high priority. This is kale, which I think you have sworn off for like Lent and the rest of your life. So this place is set up very much like a house. There's a living room, a den, a dining room. Do they need food? They can help themselves in the kitchen. Do they need sleep? There's a place where they can sleep. Do they need to do laundry? They can do that. Do they need toiletries? Do they need new clothes? There's a nice one, if it's, if it's you. Any way that Terry and the staff can help these youth and be relevant, they try to do it. I got enough time to ask you something. Um, Pass me my coffee. It's different. If you expect coffee me to think, right I have to have more fuel. No, yeah, it's good. I think there's some in it. Is it empty? No, it's got coffee in it. Yeah, okay. It's, it's mine. Watching Terry is pretty fascinating because he very quickly gets into deep conversations, or they very quickly want to talk deeply with him. I'm looking at that trend in major religions of wanting to escape from suffering. Right. You know, running away from suffering is the equivalent of running away from your problems. I was just wondering your view on, on that and how it's a real trend in Christianity which you're more in touch with. If you think all suffering is bad, you, you got a real conundrum, you know, when we celebrate Christ being crucified on a cross, right? At the core of Christianity is this belief that Christ chose to go through a great deal of suffering to bring about restoration of something. As we hung out, this is what we saw over and over. Terry engaging with the youth, and the youth hanging out like this is their home, even though they only come here for a few hours every weekday. Around 60 to 70 different youth come here every week. They feel comfortable here. At least once a week, the group gathers around for what Terry calls a concert of prayer. I'm thankful for what? I'm not in pain. All the Grateful that I'm not in pain. Yeah, all the, that's back on health care. Grateful to be back on health care. My ACL mom's I'm grateful for an ACL to recover. I'm grateful for hope. Hope. I'm grateful for I'm people who just try to do the right thing. Like See people, people who try to do the right thing. Love and make the world better, even in times when it sucks. Grateful for people to make the world better. Uh, grateful for what? A skateboard. Grateful for my skateboard. This concert of prayer went on for over an hour. In their own way, they were connecting and engaging with God. Uh, moving on to the possibly hardest question. I want God to heal me now. Heal that knee now. I want God to do what? <laughs> help me get out of myself. I want God to help me get out of myself. I feel like I have been disconnected from the people I once had great connections with so or help me develop new ones. Reconnect me with people that I can have healthy connections with. Yeah. Help me develop new connections we'll with get right people. This is really good. Let's, let's finish up with a couple questions about I want God to do what in Austin. Afterwards, we wanted to sit down with Terry to hear more of how he's seen God at work. Terry wanted a beer. 
so we went to Lazarus Brewing in East Austin. But before we get to the conversation, here's a quick announcement. If you're liking this vlog, you may want to check out our other episodes on our channel. And while there, you can subscribe to catch new episodes as soon as they're released. Now, back to the conversation. How do you see God at work? God's at work in the little things about what clients say to us and what things happen, that we have things people need, people ask for stuff and they show up, or they ask for stuff and it's the very next thing we unpackage out of a box. Right. Um, but the thing that thrills me the most is when somebody, somebody gets God and, and reconnects with God. It's just so exciting to see. Um, I mean, it's a joyful thing and we try to celebrate with that. That's what's more exciting to see than, I mean, it's fine to see God moving in our lives, but to see God moving in somebody else's life is, is super exciting. And, and I mean, shock, and it's usually shocking. It's usually someone you wouldn't, you couldn't have guessed. It's like, I mean, someone said today, dude, I'm the biggest, you know, pagan there is, and I find, I find usefulness in studying the Bible. I find it's a good piece of literature, and it's a good piece of wisdom, and it's an influential book. And we just broke down talking about all that. And, you know, the guy who says, in one hand, I'm a pagan, is defending God and his word, in the other hand, and that's God at work. What's the most recent thing that comes to mind where you're like, that could only have happened because of God? I mean, that's probably a daily thing, too, but... Uh, you know, the thing that comes to the top of my head is a guy I was just talking to. He's been in Texas for I don't know how long and he's never had a Texas ID because he's been addicted mm -hmm. in cycles, he's been homeless, and he has no ID. And he's like, for the first time in my life, I want an ID because there's jobs I can get that are better than this and there's things I want to do that are better than this and I can't do them. And he's not feeling the pull to go back to addiction. And this is somebody who's been angry with me, angry at the world, in addiction cycles, and he's at peace and happy, and happy to bear the yoke of employment. And I mean, I consider that a miracle. And he would too. Why do you attribute that to God when someone might watch it and be like, well, that's just a good thing? It is just a good thing, yeah. but if we were relying on cognitive therapy to make the kind of anger and the kind of hurt disappear, and I believe in cognitive therapy. But if we were relying on cognitive therapy to heal him, it would be years. There's no explanation for how he's doing so well that anyone could buy. You don't go from zero to 60 that fast. And I, so I think it's God. And I think he would too. What have you learned from being with the street youth? I've learned everything that matters about ministry from them. And, and what I've learned, is, as I know a street person, just how they feel and the complexities of their life and the frustrations and challenges and joys and you know, pain and whatever, it, it allows me to build empathy. It allows me to care about issues way beyond street youth. I mean, you know, I, I, I can sound like a one note issue, you know, and, and I care deep. I mean, I'm focused on street youth. I'm passionate about street youth, but I care about changing this world for the better across the board. We all should, we all should. Not only should we, we all must. But in order to do that, we have, we have to have empathy for the people we're suggesting should change or be changed. We have to be able to understand what, are their, what is their life like and what are their problems and you know, what are they feeling and what is their goal. We, we can't just show up and prescribe change, I don't think. I don't think that works. So what's the key to doing that? As you show up and you're hanging out with people, what's going through your mind? It's to be a learner and observer first, right? And then a listener. And then maybe an actor. And that's why our mission statement is to know, to love, and then to serve. It's to enjoy street youth and to um, engage with them and then to support them. <laughs>